Hi, I'm Kelly Nato. I'm the director for the Healthcare Preparedness Program, Georgia Department of Public Health. And we would like to talk today about the hospital infectious disease network that we've built here in Georgia. We built that as a result of Ebola virus disease. Ebola came to our shores in Georgia as a result of missionaries and workers being treated at Emory and Nebraska coming back into this country back in 2014 and 2015. And we learned a lot about Ebola very fast that perhaps we hadn't known before. We had lots of education, there was lots of focus on it. And you might think, well, gosh, why are we still talking about Ebola? Because it's not here anymore, right? But you see it is. So this is the current EVD outbreak. It's in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. And there have been many cases with a very high mortality rate, and a large proportion of those mortality of the mortality rate are children. So there certainly is reason to always be concerned and vigilant about Ebola virus disease, as well as other highly infectious diseases. As a result, in 2014 and 15, we built in Georgia a tiered hospital infectious disease network. And this is uh, based on guidance from the CDC, based on guidance from our Georgia Department of Public Health, and patterned much after the trauma network or stroke networks, other networks like that that you may be familiar with, where everyone needs to have the basic information about how you care for that type of patient, and then higher levels of care receive then higher acuity patients. So the most important thing to remember with this tiered system, and we'll go through it one tier at a time, the most important thing to remember is that all of us, anyone who cares for a patient, anyone who encounters a patient, any place in the state, is technically a tier three facility or a frontline facility, meaning that you need to know how to identify that particular person that has a travel history, that might have con symptoms consistent with a disease they might have uh, been exposed to in another country, how to isolate them appropriately for their own safety as well as the safety of the staff and the other patients in your facility, and inform Georgia Department of Public Health that you have this suspicion and let us help you uh, guide this process of how we're gonna care for the patient. It requires you to think carefully about how you train your personnel what kind of places you're going to use in your facility to isolate these individuals or care for them, and then how you plan for that. Do you have the appropriate supplies and PPE and where do you keep them? All of those things need to be considered. So again, who's a tier three? And the answer to that is all of us. Anyone that encounters a patient, regardless of where that is in the state, needs to have that basic skill set. So again, that basic skill set for tier three is identify, isolate, and inform. Once you identify that someone has a travel history, that they have symptoms that go with that travel history, uh, then you need to isolate them appropriately, notify the Georgia Department of Public Health, and we will assist you in getting them transported to a higher level of care. We do have hospitals that have volunteered to be at that higher level of care. They're both tier two or assessment facilities, tier one or treatment facilities across the state of Georgia. Those hospitals were originally designated in, by March of 2015, and they're now being revisited. We do that, again, much like we do trauma systems and stroke centers, things like that, to make sure that those facilities are meeting the same requirements we currently have four tier one or treatment centers and six tier two or assessment centers. Now hospitals, if your facility is interested in perhaps becoming an assessment hospital for highly infectious diseases or perhaps even a treatment center, if you have interest in that, don't hesitate to let me know that and we'll have a further conversation. The tier two facilities or assessment hospitals are have to have the ability to perform the diagnostic testing for patients of interest who have that travel history, who have those symptoms, to determine whether or not they actually have a particular disease of, in question, and they have to be able to isolate and care for them for up to 96 hours. Now, why 96 hours? Because again, depending on the disease and the testing protocols, it may take a while for that disease to manifest itself to get a positive test result. If at any time though that patient at a tier two facility becomes worse, uh, in the case of Ebola virus disease, they become wet. 
meaning the disease is progressing quickly, then they are transferred to that higher level of care. So the tier two facility doesn't have to keep them, they can be transferred up to a higher level of care. The tier one centers that are treatment hospitals, those hospitals have the ability to treat and care for the patient throughout the full duration of their illness. So they too can provide that frontline care uh, if a patient should wander into their emergency department or their uh, clinic and have a travel history and symptoms that are appropriate, they too need to have the ability to do uh, tier three functions, frontline functions. They can do diagnostic testing obviously, but then treatment centers have the ability to take care of those patients throughout their illness. Now, the remaining question is, how do I know if someone has a travel history that might be appropriate or that might be of concern? So one of the things as clinicians that we're trained from the beginning of our training to ask someone is if they've traveled in the last 30 days. So where have you traveled in the last 30 days should be part of your initial assessment or initial intake questioning of any patient that you encounter. And if, that, uh, if the answer to that question is uh, they, they, they've been out of the country, they've been someplace that you don't recognize, the Georgia Department of Public Health has developed something called the, George, the Travel Clinical Assistant, DPH Travel Clinical Assistant. The link here is on the slide for you to see for that hyperlink. You can just go to the Georgia Department of Public Health website as well on that front page. Uh, Travel Clinical Assistant is where you want to go on the front page. And this is again, after you've asked the question, where have you traveled in the last 30 days? When you do go to Travel Clinical Assistant, here's what it looks like. And you're simply going to type in the name of the country where that patient has traveled. You're going to type that in. And what comes up is a listing for that country of their current outbreaks in that country, as well as the diseases that are endemic on a regular basis in that country. And for the outbreaks, it will give you what are the risk factors, what are the signs and symptoms, what kind of isolation would they need, what kind of PPE do you need. It gives you the, the information quick at your fingertips of everything your clinicians need to know. So please be sure that all of your clinicians are well aware of this Travel Clinical Assistant tool. So this would be, again, the diseases relevant for those travelers in that country. So I'll just remind you that the reason that we're focusing on highly infectious diseases is it could happen any day. And Dr. Drenzik, our uh, epidemiologist for the state, is fond of saying it's only a plane right away. So whatever's coming to Georgia is already in the air sometime today and is going to land. And so we need to be ready for any type of patient with any type of travel history and, and symptomatology that we can deal with that we know how to safely identify, isolate, inform DPH for further assistance, and just remind you to always ask that travel question. If I can help you in any way, this is my contact information. I thank you for your attention.